Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Paint Party live stream. I believe this is episode 107 of the live stream. It's so good to have you with me here in my home studio this evening. It is a beautiful day here in the mountains. The windows are wide open and it we've had a lot of rain and it got really cold, but today has been beautiful probably in the 60s or 70s so just a beautiful finally summer day here in the mountains and i'm so glad that you're with me this live stream is really simple it's my learn to paint journey and i meet you every week here on the channel wherever you're watching you can participate in the comments and i do enjoy engaging with you throughout the live stream so feel free to comment or ask questions as we go through the live stream I am learning as we go, so I try to explain what I'm learning and kind of what I'm trying or experimenting with as I go. And every week we do a new painting. So this evening we are, you may see behind me, a, oh, I think I just lost connection. So my audio should be there and now my camera's back. I apologize about that. All right, so we are gonna dive into a new painting this evening and something a little bit different. You can see behind me the, um, the uh, image that we'll be using, but let me put that up on the screen. I'll get this camera switched around and we'll get painting. All right, so I'll switch you over to this camera. Oops, excuse me there. And we will get started. Hi, Lola. Always so good to see you as always. Um, let me put my palette there and the image that we will be painting from is this one and I'm going to get my camera set up or my phone set up for the um, canvas so that you can easily follow what's going on. Okay. And I took the liberty this time of toning the canvas and then doing a, I apologize for the sounds on Main Street right outside the window. It is tourist season, so we occasionally have motorcycles and loud vehicles going up and down Main Street. So, all right, let me get this on. Oh, let me put on my whoop, whoop, whoop. Hey there, mom and dad. So glad to have you back in town. I put your packages on the fireplace. So I hope you found those. I didn't have to water your plants much because Lots of rain. I did put the hanging ones down so they would get the rain, but uh, yeah, we had rain almost the entire time you were gone. All right. Y'all pardon my personal catch up. My parents have been out of town, and so we will get started here painting the... What is this, the Parthenon? Um, can't remember what this building is called. All right. Dad's out mowing and weed eating. Yeah, it is uh, a everything's gone crazy, which is nice. It's nice to have the greenery. All right, so what I did basically is you can see here on my canvas, I have put our normal um, compositional grid over the painting um, or on the canvas. And I have then, um, what have I done? I have toned it with the umber underneath and then I did go over and do basically just a two-tone value sketch and my hope was that it would help us get into the or the plan was it would help us get into the painting more quickly 
because we would be able to go right into um, the composition would be correct and the perspective and everything and the values more more or less would be correct and so then it will just be putting on the layers and my hope is that we'll then be able to get the um, we will be able to get the painting done more quickly this evening so what i'm going to do is start furthest back to closest i am going to do the sky and get that in place so we'll take a little blue here and we will just get started hope you all had a great week welcome to those who are just popping in you can participate in the live stream this evening via the chat wherever you're watching us so feel free to ask questions or make comments it is my great joy and pleasure to engage with you on these live streams so please don't hesitate to join in so glad that you join me every week I did a little bit of, for those of you who were here last week, I did a little bit of extra work on the tiger this week um, that we worked on last week. He's not quite perfect. The perspective of his features is still a little bit off, but we are getting there. So, um, yeah. You can see those images on when it's done on my Instagram, as always. So if you're not following there, feel free to do so. I also did several digital paintings this or sketches this week. Those were posted on Instagram. Um, incidentally, I've been painting flowers, which are kind of the bane of my artistic existence up until now but I think I am getting a little bit better little by little and so that's encouraging all right we have this covered and we'll have to do one more at least one more coat on this sky because I do see the color underneath and the I can still see my guide lines a little bit. I don't know that you can see, um, but it's amazing putting a little color when you get the when you get the um, values correct. Even just on a rough sketch, I mean, I literally just blotted in like none of this is precise at all but it all of a sudden starts to come off the canvas and look r much more um, much more oop that wasn't supposed to go there we'll have to fix this may change this blue tone this is a much lighter blue tone but I do like the the original reference kind of that more cobalt blue color this is kind of a brighter blue so we'll see how it plays out
I love the lily pads one. Thank you, Lola. I really, really enjoyed that came from my the Facebook um, reference group, and they don't let us post digital art back to the group. Um, but I was grateful for somebody posted that reference, and it was just really pretty. And it was, I was kind of honestly surprised how well that turned out when I did it. But the lily pads were a lot of fun. Really pretty. So I enjoyed doing that. And then I did, those of you who don't follow on Instagram, I had done a painting or a sketch of poppies um, and peonies that were in my grandmother's yard. And so it was kind of a nice, oh, whoops. I need to bring my reference up here. And all right, so we have that. I think we're in a pretty good place. So let's keep going. Basically now what we want to do is see if we can, oops, Sorry about that. See if we can now match in the values we have sketched in and put some more detail in here. So we just want to use the um, sketch we have. So let's see. Okay. I'm going to mix some of this. I think we want to do, I want to do the sunny side work first. So let's see. Hi there, Olan. So glad to have you join. Welcome. I hope you have a great day. All right. I think I want to start sketching in the sun side. So we want to take this yellow and white and mix it and we don't want to go too yellow so maybe a little bit of some raw sienna and raw umber think raw umber will probably go to the other side but let's just see because I'm not sure I think this is gonna be too red yeah Maybe. We'll see. We can always tone it down. All right. Let's take some of this. And what we want to do is begin to put our detail in before our... So I am watching the red one. I want to start to draw in some of that detail before I lose my... 
guidelines. Double checking this all the time. So it goes about there and it drops in there. We have that and it continues. Okay, that should give us a good basic starting point. Saw the Lotus creation. Thanks so much. Yeah, those were, it was a lot of fun to do that one. I was a little surprised how it turned out. It turned out really well, so... Okay, now we want to come here and go up. All right. How's that, I think? I think that's relatively correct. We can work on that. Trying to get these placed all in the correct space because then I can do another layer of the uh, sky and cover up all of my, and if all of my guidelines are covered up, then that's okay.
I'm mixing a little more raw umber. Come on this side because it's sunny, but it's also a little more, a little cooler. So I want some of that variation in the rock. There we go. Hey there, Dream World. Thanks for joining. So glad to see you. All right, let's see. Now we'll do go back to the light. And some more. Just gonna have to keep mixing this. All right, now. I wanna start putting in some, okay, there's my center line. So I want to put in this. I am so glad you are here this week. Let's see. And I think next week is, well, maybe not. Monday night, I think is the Independence Day in the U.S.
Okay. We'll keep just going and see if we can get the majority of this in. Um, And I am drawing basically large shapes here, which you can see I'm basically drawing the shape of the, again, pardon the loud motorcycles. I'm drawing the shape of the sunlight on the column. So I'm not drawing the actual column. I'm trying to draw the shape of the sunlight and there's the shadow and we'll just go in and plug them in. But again, I'm trying to get as accurate as possible. I'm basically doing the same thing as I did with the underpainting. Then see on this one is adjust this as we go. This is much more yellow than the previous. So I'm mixing a little more white and a little brown in there. Try to tone it down a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry, my phone, there it goes. It's really having problems tonight. I don't know what the deal is. I apologize for that. Alright, I think we're getting in the rough the 
rough. Um, framework. We'll do the sunny side of these columns here. So we want to come in and right there. All right, we're getting a wide range. As I mix, I'm getting a wide range of values here, which I don't really like, but, um, so let's see. But we will deal with it. Oh, that's rendering all right, or reading all right. Definitely looks like it's in the background, huh? Cool. Again, like, I'm always, I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm always, like, so surprised when... You just plug in values and they work. It's like, what? Now we need to put in the
structure behind. I think I need to put a little more brown, darken it just a tad. There we go. To put in this so it's clear. This is behind the other. Oops. There we go. Hi there, Bob. Uh, no, it actually wasn't. We didn't get to Italy. Um, this is from my art group um, references where they, the art group that lets you uh, use their pictures as references and somebody let us use it. So yeah. Very kind, but Okay, now I'm going to take some of this and bring it up here into this shadow area. I think it's a little too light. We'll have to take it down some. Okay, let's see. Dark brown and blue. Let's see what we can do.
kind of getting off kilter, but then we'll go back and add the details that will make this work better. All right. All right, we have the main pieces in place. So now I am going to pause for a minute, step away from the painting, step back a little bit. Okay, I'm pleased pretty much with kind of where it's laid out in general. Now, I think the key is to go in and kind of refine the lines a little bit. So we'll put another coat of our, another coat on our um, sky, hopefully cover up our guide lines. So let's take a look at what we can do. 
for our sky. All right. Wanna fix a little bit of the cobalt because I want to bring in that deep sky color as opposed to the baby blue. Want it to really stand out. So yeah, I want to bring in a very dark kind of sky. We'll mix this. I brought some of the lighter color in. So that we can Ooh, that blue is looking really weird, isn't it? Doesn't look as weird. I think it's the light. Let me see. Yeah. I think it's the light. But I'm happy with the coverage and the brush strokes that are showing there. So I'm just going to leave it. There's that texture, which looks really cool. Now we need to articulate the really, um, you know, the specific lines here I need to start really getting specific about the lines against these edges. So this is the time now where I need to get more precise. Um, I think I am going to 
take a new brush. That is Yeah, that looks really cool, doesn't it? Welcome to those of you that have popped in. Um, there's quite a few people tonight on the live stream. You can participate by, if you would like, by asking questions or making comments in the comments section wherever you're watching. Feel free to do so. And I apologize when my camera goes out like that. Apparently I'm having some Wi-Fi issues because it's just randomly deciding to go out. Okay. I am diluting this quite significantly now. Let's see. I shouldn't be mixing with my brush, but I've gotten used to doing that, so. All right, what I want to do, I think, is reestablish the lines up here on the edge. So let's take some of this sunlight shade, take it up onto here and see if we can Re-establish the edge. Against the blue sky.
Okay, now let me see if I can do the same here.
this is a challenge because the colors are so, and the variation in, well, really it's in value in the stone is so, um, minimal, but when it comes to rendering, it can appear so different because you mix a new batch and all of a sudden this that I'm about to put down is going to look so much more red or warm than what I just did. See how this is much cooler? So, it's a real challenge, but we are up for it. And when you change in value that much, and then all of a sudden it brings this so much further forward. So if you don't keep it, the whole thing balanced, then it looks really bizarre. So that's the challenge right now. Keep it balanced. So we're going to keep trying to keep it as close as possible.
Hey, Marta. Are you back in the States or are you still gallivanting the world? I saw you were in Egypt and Italy and all over the place. And I was jealous but grateful that you took us all with you so I could live vicariously because I mean, amazing trip. And happy belated birthday. I think it just passed, didn't it? Well, wishing you the best, unfortunately, happens to all of us, doesn't it? But you are definitely living life in style. Hi, John. Good evening. Hope you're enjoying this beautiful weather we're getting. I deeply appreciate the kind of comments. It is always encouraging. That's one reason I keep doing this now year after year. It's crazy to think I've done two years of this already is because sometimes it's easy to get in the studio and not realize you've improved at all and having some kind of outside relatively objective perspective is definitely helpful so I appreciate the kind words and encouragement I learned something, or I kind of am developing philosophy as I do this of art and specifically the art I'm creating. What I'm realizing is efficacy, effectiveness in this type of art. Um, is definitely about more about what you observe and how you observe it what you see and what you notice and variations in values and colors and where shadows fall and what you choose to emphasize and all of these things which is what makes it interesting and makes it unique to each person because other people will paint the exact same thing and will emphasize different aspects. So I believe it is Rome, but I'm not sure. 
Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, maybe it's Greece. I wish I knew. I did not take the image. I just uh, used it with permission from a Facebook group I belong to. And I don't believe the original poster posted where it was. But I assume it is, it could be Greece, who knows? Because I know there's the Pantheon, the Parthenon, and I don't know the difference. I think the Parthenon is a yeah I don't know Pantheon is where all of the different gods were I believe so maybe a temple but breaking things down and yes exactly that's really what this process is that I'm embarked on right now is just Breaking down the lights and the shadows into smaller and smaller shapes. So it's exactly breaking them down into pieces. Yes, you are absolutely correct. It's the skill with which you can do that, the, the level to which you de decide to Greco-Roman it is. Yes, I like that, Marta. Yes, Greco-Roman it is. Let's just say that's correct. Okay, now I want to When you paint from a reference, when you try to achieve hyperrealism, or you only use it as a reference? Uh, a little bit in between. I wouldn't say hyperrealism, but right now you can see it's like I'm not varying it much at all. It's pretty realistic. Um, and that has been my MO for most of my development so far, just because I started with no drawing or painting skills like. Um, or undeveloped 
painting and drawing skills. And so I really want to learn to manipulate the, um, or produce what I see or what I notice before I do too much um, adjustment. I And I'm starting to get to the place where I know enough that I can say, okay, I'm going to put shadows here, or I'm going to change this, or I want to put a tree in here, um, and my skills are at a level where I can do so. But yeah, it is mostly, I would say, realist um, for the most part, yes. Skill is putting it all back together with pigment. Yeah, it really, yeah, this, this is the challenge of this painting because it's a fairly simple structure, a fairly simple subject, but it is definitely the challenge even from one, one uh, column to the next is how do we get the pigment right and so I'm going to take a little break because see these two are slightly redder than this one these are slightly bluer this is yellow red blue that's what my eyes see essentially they're all the same kind of but we can't have that variation too dramatically or it throws the whole thing off because that's all you see so until I get into these things, I don't know like what I can or can't do. I mean, I have an idea. Like, you know, I've got the basic structure correct and you know, it looks okay. It's academic, you know, an academic painting, it's all right. But, you know, to get it to really read and for people to really be like, oh, it feels like I'm there. That's the challenge. So it's almost easier to do looser, less, less precise, because you can suggest the structure. Like when I just had the underpainting, it was it was pretty nice. It was, it was monochromatic. Obviously it was all shades of Brown, but it was like, Oh, I see what that is. There's not a lot of detail, not a lot of precision, but I get it. And now as I add more and more, I create more and more challenges for myself, but that's part of the fun of it to me is, you know, figuring that out and really, And the skill comes, the level of skill comes when you can choose every brush stroke very intentionally. I personally don't like to become the slave of it. I agree. And that is my goal eventually, is to get to the place. I mean, this one is well composed and it's fun, that helps because it takes some of the, I don't have to worry about composition, so it takes one of the pillars of a good painting off my brain. Um, but yeah, it's, my goal is to get my skills to the level where I can be much more free As an artist, do you find more joy painting from imagination or a reference photo? Um, most of my work starts at least with the reference photo. Almost all of the, and every time I do on this live stream, I start with a reference photo because it's more quick and we can get more done. 
and it's also interesting i think visually for you all to see kind of what we're going for and then if we make if i make choices to adjust it you see why and i can explain why i made that decision but eventually yes i would like to be able to get where i have reference photos and um, actually I'm going to start or planning to start a series of paintings of the Black Hills where I live and those will be loosely informed by um, reference photos of different spots but I want to create a very specific type of painting on those and so they will be much more um, imaginative, even though they will be real places. The style will be much more imaginative. That makes sense. That's my goal, at least. We shall see. It's just a constant process. The more you do it, I mean, it's fun no matter what, but the more you do it, the more skilled you get like anything, so. Yeah, thanks for the conversation, y'all, and for the engagement. Makes it much more fun and interesting for me be in here with y'all. FYI, I looked it up. This is the Parthenon in Greece, similar to the Pantheon in Rome, which has similar columns, columns but a peaked roof. Ah, yes, you're right, because there is a duplicate Parthenon. Um, sorry. Maybe Pantheon, I think in, I can't remember, in Memphis, or in Nashville, Nashville, but I thought that was, I thought there was a statue of Athena in there. I don't know. Anyway, thank you for looking that up, Bob. This is good to know. So this is Greece, not Rome. Good to know. All right. Let's see if we can start to put in this. Some of these look really wobbly because of the lines, too, also. So what we need to do, come in, This will, I'll put shadow in here so that it is less conspicuous, but 
or in less weird looking. I've been to the Pantheon in Rome, but not the Parthenon. Cool. I hope one day to get to Italy. I got my appetite whetted for travel last summer in Europe, but I was on the far, far west end of Europe, so I never got over to the uh, to Italy, Greece. I didn't even get over to Germany. I was just on the coast of Spain and France and Portugal. I had to turn on a fan right over me because I'm like starting to get warm but then the fan is drying out my paint faster than I can keep it I mean it's just drying out like crazy so Not the greatest freehand drawer, as you can tell by this column. He's really giving me problems, isn't it? So that's all right. We'll uh, we'll make it work. Yeah, it's completely drying up so quick. Ugh. What a mess. I may have to turn it back off for 25 minutes. I think I'm going to do that. Oh, I'll just have to burn up. Anita. Well, there is one across the room. Maybe I can turn on that will blow indirectly. It will blow on, oops, excuse me for that. It'll blow on me, but indirectly on the paint. So maybe that'll help. Yeah, that was causing quite a mess.
The other decision is how, how detailed do I get further away from the center? We want most of the detail here and less and less of the detail in the back. Or as you move away from the Oops. Okay, now we want to go and try to reestablish the areas in the back. So we have a
All right, we have about 20 minutes left, a little bit less. So let's see what we can get done here. I'm running into the same challenges here as I did when I was painting 
um, Mont Saint Michel, that big giant painting. I don't know if I ever, I may have done part of that for a live stream, I don't remember. Um, if I did Saint Michel, but it's been sitting in my the corner of my studio ever since because it's a giant giant painting but so much of it it's similar where it's all variations of a variations of a different colors of stone basically and so it's like, how do you render, you know, how do you, this is where I think it would be easier for, um, for, to use oils because they would not dry out as easily. And then you would have relatively consistent color and values but thus is not the way acrylics work so and it is a challenge to force myself to try to be more precise and it'll be interesting then to do more. What brand? I actually, right now I use a, um, just Artist Loft, which is the generic um, Michaels brand. I do, um, I'm using the academic level, so maybe their more professional level is a little bit better, a little bit different, but I don't feel like I'm at the point where it makes a difference one way or another. I mean, maybe when I decide to make that major shift, I will probably go straight to oils though. Um, and when I'm at the point where I really want to dive into oils, then I will invest in quality oils. Um, but for two years, the artist loft and I also use Liquitex, which is also a, you can get, at Blix or Michaels or wherever, um, 
Artist's Loft is the Michaels brand. Um, I haven't tried craft. I assume by craft acrylic you mean um, more professional. If not, please clarify what am I missing um, because, yeah, I haven't, uh, haven't explored much from where I started. So, which has been okay so far. This one, I think this is going to just take some additional time. I'm not sure how detailed I want to get and how, um, and to what level I want to dive into the detail. It may, I may get to a point where I, on this one, I say this is the level of my skill right now and just be okay with that. Um, we shall see. Okay, this is not working, but it'll give us a little texture. to do another coat on these anyway but it gives a little bit of so they're not just stark Apple Barrel. Ooh. Apple Barrel is your go to. Oh, uh, what? Um, 
craft paint is usually lower quality. I use house paint. You use to paint your house. Um, okay, so yes, I am using craft because it's basically amateur or student level, academic level, I guess it says. Um, so I'm using craft. Um, oh, duh, I get it. Craft paint, like to paint crafts. Yeah, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Could exaggerate the shadows for artistic purposes. Yes, um, and that's the thing. It's like, it's, uh, I mean, that's a good part of art is there's no wrong answer. And it is like, what, again, what do I want the, right now, the way I've painted this draws your eye to, like it makes you look at, oh, this is not realistic. Um, but you know what it is. It conveys a certain feeling, a certain um, perspective. And so there's value there. It's just how what do I want to communicate? And as an artist, what am I trying to make, not make, but what am I hoping that people feel? Um, when they look at this. And so, yeah. Trying to carve in some more of this. There we go. Now we need some the blue, the brown, need a little bit darker. But at this stage, it doesn't take a whole lot of brush strokes to give suggestions of something that, something that's there. There we go, see? We rebalance our values again, and suddenly we have shape.
Oh my goodness, we are way over time, y'all. It is time for me to say goodbye. I am sorry for going way over. I just kept painting and painting and painting, not paying attention to what was happening. So that said, let's wrap this up. There's a lot to go, but not bad for a first track. Let me come over here and switch back to the camera, the main camera, so that I can wrap this bad boy up. I'll move my main camera over here. All right, y'all. So next Monday is, I think, the third. And so, and I have family coming into town. So I may or may not be here Monday. If I do, I'll change the date. If I don't, I'll change the date on the event on YouTube. And um, so you can keep an eye there. All right, this is where we are with this one. Not too bad. You can tell what it is, but it still needs quite a bit of work. So um, I'll continue as I always do. I thought maybe working on this a little bit would, uh, <laughs> putting the underpainting in would help, which I think it did, but um, there's so much, I've learned so much but it's a real challenge to do something that is relatively uniform in tone. Um, so yeah, not, not really disappointed at all with this, but it looks better at a distance than it does up close. So we'll continue working on that. Um, anyway, I want to thank you for staying extra this evening and for keeping me company all of the questions, all of the engagement. It was a pleasure spending my Monday evening with you, and I hope that you have a great week. You can follow me on Instagram at Stephen E. Rice, R-I-C-E, -E, and uh, see the progress photos of paintings that I have finished there. So I look forward to catching you next time, whether it's next week or the following. Have a great week, and we will see you soon.